Welcome back. Do you suck at shading? You probably do because you clicked on this video. Let's get to it. I'm one of the artists working on Dwarf, and I'm gonna teach you how to shade some pixel art. Yeah! You should uh, wish this this game. All right, bros and brodettes. So I'm gonna start by drawing a square. <clears throat> shading a square, how <laughs> entertaining. But come on, eh? That's how we gotta start. We gotta start by shading a square and uh in a circle too right actually why did, why did i make two all right and then uh let's put that circle right there right over there okay we don't need that anymore okay so let's say this is a, a top down game <clears throat> um and this is gonna be like a crate or something okay so i'm just gonna put brown there uh, a crate a piece of furniture whatever right so um, personally, I like to erase the bottom line because this is the part where it touches the floor. So when, whenever you're shading, um, let me do this one uh, green. It's gonna be an apple or something. Actually red, yeah, 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 yeah. So whenever you're shading, you, need, you have your normal color and then you have your darker color, right? Obviously. So <laughs> what we need to do here is go darker. And if you remember my last video, I introduced you to the HSV. So if you're using a sprite or if you're using Photoshop, you want to you want to get on the HSV, get off that RGB. That shit's for noobs. So <laughs> HSV hue is going to be your color. Saturation is the amount of that color and value or vibrance. I forget which one it is. Who cares? It's, <laughs> it's how much white or black is in that color. If you're in Photoshop and you click on the color, you can see that they have HSB and RGB. The HSB is the same as the HSV in um, A Sprite. B is brightness, and I guess they call it vibrance in A Sprite. It's the same thing; it doesn't matter. But another thing that you can do is you can go to Window and search for a color, and this is what you should just have up. And over here, you have the the same three sliders. You have your hue, your saturation. And your brightness so uh, there you go that's what you can do for Photoshop and right here you can choose different kinds of um, versions of this so like you can have a hue cube but what you really want is you want this HSB slider and that or you want the color wheel because the color wheel will have the slider and obviously the color wheel to get to that uh, window you can click the color right here and it'll pull up that window. I like to just keep this window open and not close it and I'll just put it somewhere, I'll dock it somewhere. All right, enough of that, right? So, obviously, if you wanna shade, all you gotta do is go darker. If you look at the saturation, this looks grayer, it doesn't look darker, and you are correct. So the simplest thing that you could do is just move down on the value. And that's all we're gonna do for now, because I, I want to use this as an example. And we're going to um, go ahead and shade that. You should always have this, um, let me move this here. You should always have this uh, window where you can see what it looks like from far away, because from far away you can see the contrast here isn't high enough. So I actually, I need to go further. Now the contrast is high enough to notice. When you're zoomed in, it's really easy to see the difference in the, in the vibrance, in the color. But from far away, sometimes your shading needs more contrast. And um, that's why you gotta make sure you have these little windows over here. Anyway, so that's it, the uh, tutorial done. <laughs> that's all you gotta do to shade, right? Well, I'll show you a few more things. So let me go ahead and copy this and paste it over here. And I'll show you the different, the different ways you can select the darker color. So obviously I just went down on the vibrance, but another thing you can do, let me see how much I went down. Okay, yeah. So another thing that you can do is not just decrease the vibrance, vibrance, but also decrease the saturation. And I'm gonna kind of overdo it a little bit here. But so this one, I decreased, this, decreased the saturation. Let me copy paste that. I'm gonna actually put these closer to each other. And then for this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to increase the saturation. All right, so I'm gonna actually reorder these. So I'm gonna put this one first, and so this one is uh, just decreasing the um, value, 
This one is decreasing the value and increasing the saturation. This one is decreasing the value and decreasing the saturation. But there's a couple more, all right? This is where we get to the like really interesting kind of shading. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the, the first one again. And um, here's how you can make your shading, um, how you can make your shading interesting. Oh, let me zoom out, okay, there we go. So <clears throat> we, let's say we wanna make a darker version of, of this color. So of course we can decrease the vibrance, but to make it seem um, a little bit more interesting, what a lot of uh, pixel artists do is they, when they decrease the, um, when they decrease the vibrance, they go towards blue or red. What I mean by that is, as you are sh as you are uh, shading, you are going towards a blue tint or a red tint. Those are the two most common tints to go towards. And if you're creating um, content that's outside, like a forest, etc., you you should probably go towards the blue. All right. So the next thing I'm going to introduce you to is hue shift shading. What this is, is what this is is that <laughs> as you um, as you shade you slowly keep sliding the hue over. So I'm gonna go a little bit left with this one and it makes for a more interesting color. And I'm sure you've seen this in other pixel artists art. You just didn't realize what they were doing. And that's it, that's, that's the trick to have more interesting colors when you shade. So I went left with that one and with this one I'm going to go to the right. And there you go. All right, so I'm gonna stick with this one which is my favorite and I'll show you a couple of extra things and I'll show you a couple of extra things to snazz it up, to make it snazzy. Jeez, this thing's huge. What, am I, let me, what do I put there? So remember how I said when you're shading, and uh, you can often go towards a red or a blue hue. So let's go ahead and change this black um, line here, uh, red. Well, I'll do both just, just to show you. So um, I went ahead and I color picked it. I obviously need to increase the saturation a little bit or else there'll be no color in it. And I don't know where my hue is, so let me increase the vibrance just to make sure I'm on red. Yeah, I'm on red, and um, and I'll and I'll pick a really dark red. I'm gonna go really high up on the saturation, but I'm gonna make sure that the vibrance is low. And now, if I click this, it has it almost looks black. Like subconsciously, people will think this is black, but it's not. It's it's a shade of red, and it makes the object look a little bit more interesting. I mean, look, I'm gonna put this side by side. And just look how much more interesting uh, this one looks. It's almost subconscious, but uh, uh, but it's a nice little touch. So let me make a, 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 a blue version of this too. So once again, I'm gonna put the vibrance up, make sure I'm on blue, and then put the vibrance really low. And there it is with the blue um, shading. And uh, it's, it's really common to do either of these. The reason it's red or blue and not like orange or whatever, it's because blue is uh, for is because blue is for cool colors, red is for warm colors. So whether you want your composition to feel to, ha to have that warm feel or that cool feel, you'll either go towards blue or you'll go towards red. I personally like the red one in this case, um, especially since these already are warm colors. Okay, so the next thing to make your um, make your objects pop is edge edge highlights. And you've seen me do this in the furniture tutorial, but basically um, at an edge, you put a highlight. And this is um, sort of like a, a reflection. It's, it's the light reflecting on that edge. And it, crea it, it creates more dimension. But um, you don't need to just put it on the edge. You can put it, um, you can put it all around. So let me, let me show you this. Oh God. This right here is still completely valid. They're two, uh, they're two different techniques, but basically all I'm doing is just um, adding a highlight to the edge. So in Dwerv, we had these bushes, and here's an example of how you can apply that technique to make your art have just better shading and pop. So one is the outline, and then um, a highlight on the edges, and a gradient on the side. And just compare these two. This, the one on the right obviously has a lot more dimension. I don't know if the, uh, you know this is just this is my technique there's uh, other people have different techniques but I think this works so you probably noticed that there were a few more things on that box um, and I'll explain those so since the light is coming from the top even on the outline here we can make it lighter and it'll give the object more form so just go ahead and color pick that 
and um, you know make it a bit lighter but you will want to decrease uh, saturation on it because we don't want this to look like it's you know glowing once again I didn't put enough contrast in it I can tell by looking over here <clears throat> so I'm gonna decrease the um, decrease the saturation and increase the vibrance until I think that there's a nice contrast there I'm gonna I'm gonna overdo it a little bit you know just to, uh, just to emphasize the this technique but um, but as you can see um, now it looks like there's a light coming from above onto this object so even the outline is part of the shading and the next thing is to basically add a gradient here on the side of this object um, some people don't really um, like to do too many gradients when they're doing pixel art and I totally get that especially if you do just like one like this it looks kind of weird it looks like I'm trying to say something like oh this piece this is two pieces of wood or something so um, you don't have to put a gradient on the side but it is kinda nice maybe at least you know near the bottom um, where it touches the ground you see that it look kinda good don't it an easy way to, to get um, a lighter color the fastest way for that I do to get a lighter color is let's say I wanted to put a lighter color right above this I'll color pick this color and I'll go to about halfway, which gives it um, transparency, it gives it an opacity. And then I'll just draw that color <laughs> right there. So you don't actually, you know, you don't need to fiddle with this when you're kind of just doing a quick gradient. You can just um, color pick and then change the alpha. And then you can do the same. Now color pick this new color. And um, yeah, there you go. When you're shading, one of the things to consider is what kind of material it is. So remember that highlight line I was talking about? Well, if you increase the saturation, I mean decrease saturation, increase vibrance, and you add a little line in the middle, and then you do it again, even even higher, look at that, it looks more reflective, right? So if you look at, uh, you know, over here, this looks more metallic, it looks shinier. I'm changing the material, and you shouldn't do this effect if it's not metal. But if it is metal, you should totally do this effect. And, uh, you know, add a, a, you can go all the way to white, and add a couple of, um, you know, if you break it up like this, um, like I am right here, this makes it look like it's a, it's a very shiny reflective material. Look at that, that looks metallic now. So that's a quick uh, way to make something go from maybe like wood to metal, is just um, add a shine, a shimmer. All right, you ready to learn the advanced shit? Here we go, boy! So, um, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, and uh, shade the, this circle. So obviously I'm not just gonna draw a line um, across. I mean, I just did, but <laughs> wait, wait, there it is. Okay, so let's um, let's shade this circle. Um, I'm gonna put the light source near the top. Whatever you know, you do. You, you guys know this this stuff. This ain't nothing new. Um, it's just gonna take me a sec because I'm slow. Okay, so like <clears throat> that might be. This might be how. A kindergartner shades something, right? This is like the most basic shading technique you can do. You have the the highlight there, and you have the the shading down here. But this one's way too dark. It's still too dark, and we should totally hue shift. There we go, baby. And there we go. This should be hue shifted to towards yellow. Yeah. So I don't know if you noticed, but I went to the right. A hue shifted to a hue shifted to the right when I was increasing the vibrance, and a hue shifted to the left. So it'd be you know, if you want to go, if you have your base color and you want to make a highlight, go to the right, and then if you want to um, shade, go to the left on the hue bar. Is what I'm talking about. Um, anyway. If all right, so what I'm gonna introduce you guys to is indirect light. <clears throat> First thing I wanna kinda show you is that to make this look more round, um, personally what I like to do is I like to add the shade color around the entire edge. Of course you can make this more complicated and, and make this one darker, lighter, like, you know, uh, whatever, I'll just do it right here. So yeah, this will get d even darker, you know? But, um, but anyway, you, you get the point. This, this makes it look uh, rounder. God, I picked a really stupid shape. It's not even like a circle, but um, I think I did it because yeah, if it's in 16 by 16, whatever, it, you guys get the point. But um, 
Okay, anyway, so it looks rounder if you um, shade it around all the edges. But <clears throat> that's not the advanced thing. The advanced thing is indirect light. So um, light, of course, shines, you know, from, uh, from above, but it also is going to reflect off of the ground and shine onto edges that aren't in direct sunlight, hence indirect light. Here are some examples of that. You can see the light color around the edge. So this is kind of the technique that we went through. First you um, find just, a, you just do a darker color, then you add a highlight and a gradient, and lastly you add the indirect light. Here's an example of that on a potion. You know, you might pick a, you see how the edge isn't the darkest, it actually has a highlight on it. Yeah, that's indirect light. You don't wanna do this for every object, it's for objects that are reflective. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw um, for a little bit and explain what I'm doing here. So I added the indirect lighting right here, but now it looks like there's not enough um, shading. So I'm going to increase the shading in the middle here. And then I'm also going to, uh, I'd like to um, sort of highlight the top over here. So I just chose um, a lighter red and I'm, and I'm highlighting the, um, I'm adding a highlight around the, around the top there. I'm gonna go about halfway. Um, that could be a little bit brighter. I'm gonna increase the vibrance there. Um, I didn't hue shift it because I don't want it to go too far away from the base color. A nice thing to do with, to make it seem a little more reflective would be to add a little, um, you know, add a little dot here, or you could, you know, do a, a little edge. If I do sort of like an edge like that, I like to fade it. So I'll go ahead and select this color, go to about halfway and click it, put it here and maybe here. And now I can select that color and also kind of um, put it around these edges as well. I think it looks, um, I think it looks a little nicer when, when the highlight is uh, faded in a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna do that. And <laughs> hopefully this is making sense to you guys. I'm trying to make this look extremely reflective. So I'm adding all sorts of all sorts of uh, reflections into this. As you can see, this highlight is way um, lighter than this one. Not all highlights have to go super bright, but you should probably pick one and then make that one highlight um, go extremely bright. So I'm gonna do that right there. Um, and I'm gonna pick this spot right here um, for another highlight. And then this shading right here seems kind of harsh. It, it, it should have a transition. So I'm just gonna do the same thing where I go halfway and um, now I'm gonna select that color and I'm gonna use this color to transition into sort of like the base color, the main color. And actually this highlight I think is actually, it's too bright so I'm going to also use that color and on the bottom sort of just uh, dim it a little bit. And now if we zoom out, this looks like an extremely reflective uh, orb. A quick way to make adjustments is to just select that and go to um, adjustments, hue and saturation. You can also do this in Photoshop. And now if you, you know, if you, if you think that it should be a little bit more saturated, have some more uh, vibrance, or you wanna change the, the hue to something else, you can do that. <clears throat> if you're like, oh crap, I didn't, you know, increase the contrast enough, you can go ahead and just use filters so you don't have to redraw stuff. And you can sort, and you can, uh, you, you should be able to, you know, mess with this and get something close to, um, close to what you want. That's all for the interpreter. Now you're a master shader. I'll see you next week. Death.